as for the Nazis on the American Army front. The rocket-firing Sherman tank is shown for the first time, shooting 60 four-and-a-half-inch rockets. A single tank matches the firing power of 15 batteries of 105-millimeter howitzers. The Sherman rocket tank can both defend itself and lay down a withering barrage. Howdy ho! Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to Super Dan Dealing in a Desert Scale Model Air Edition number three. Almost got that wrong. I thought it was five, but it's actually Scale Model Air three. Uh, these videos are actually <laughs> all over the place. I'm trying to organize them, but it's getting harder with my various uh, my various pursuits. Anyway, it is accomplished. It is finished. What have I been up to the past? Uh, approximately three weeks to four weeks since the last video I have been working on and completing the new project the tank that's right the tank which tank this one Let's see if we can get a good shot in there the Sherman m4 a1 screaming mini tank uh, scale 1 to 32 um, it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed putting this tank together, and I will definitely be putting more together and more military vehicles because it's fun. Uh, it's 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 sort of like feel like a boy again, you know. And uh, I'm going to show you all about that tank in just a second. Uh, actually, let's hold true to that statement and show you the build, the Sherman tank. Now. Hello, we're back. Um, I'm not a history buff. I'm not an expert on tanks. Uh, but what I do know uh, is that uh, there were over 50,000 Sherman tanks uh, built during World War II. Uh, more than any other tank. Uh, I think the T-34 from Russia is close. I don't know. Probably somebody will call me out on that. But uh, regardless of the fact... Uh, even though it couldn't really uh, compare in quality to the uh, last couple of uh, productions of the German tanks, uh, the Tiger and the Panzers, um, it was proof that quantity can beat out quality in warfare. And there was just so many of these produced. We were such a manufacturing juggernaut during World War II, we were able to produce so much um, hardware that we, uh, it was a big uh, part of winning WW2. And uh, here it is, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit, of uh, putting it together, um, some of the challenges I had and some of the uh, tips that I could give to other people who are thinking of putting together a, a Sherman M4A1 with the scream, Screaming Mini, the T-34 Calliope uh, rocket launchers. One tip that I want to get out right away so I don't forget is that when you're putting this on, okay, onto these holders here and here, and that's not what they're called. I don't remember what they're called. Um, put these on 
the rocket launchers first and then apply them to the sides of the turret. Uh, don't do the opposite that I did and I had a very difficult time of uh, putting these on, uh, this on, because I put these on first and they kept ripping out or popping out and I virtually had to use the strongest, strongest cement that I had to get these in here so I could bend these uh, a little bit back to get this in and put it in the holes in the side. I could have avoided all that headache by just putting it on here. So just word to the wise. Um, I've never painted or put, I didn't have to put together the, the uh, crew, but uh, I've never painted them before. So I just, uh, I got some flesh color and some tiki, uh, tiki, <laughs> it's not tiki, it's keek. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> what is it? It's khaki and khaki and some olive green, a lot of olive green, olive drab, they call it, and uh, to paint these guys. Notice I made I, I made the cigar myself. Uh, I took a little bit of the sticky note and ripped off a little piece, rolled it like a cigar, glued it. Took some cotton off a cotton swab, put it on the tips, glued glued that, and then glued it in, the, in his mouth. And it really looks like he's smoking a cigar. So that was cool. Okay. I wanted to weather it, and uh, I wasn't sure. I knew I wanted the tank to look weathered, to look like it's just gone through battle and uh, been through the mud and the slush and... I didn't think I was going to do it as heavy, but I did, and I'm glad I did because it really looks like it was through a mission, you know. Um, the streaking, I got an idea from that from a YouTube uh, video guy who does tanks left, right, up, and down, and I'd like to thank him for those suggestions. I used oil paint. You put little dots on the on, on it, and then you take a brush with light. Um thinner or just even a dry brush or just a little bit of thinner and just start streaking them down and then when it dries it looks like streaking when you're doing it you think you're ruining the tank but actually when it dries it gives out a nice streaking effect um, I put a little bit of rust on it and did the same thing with the streaking to uh, make the rest look a lot lighter than it was uh, for the mud I didn't uh, do like big chunks of mud um, maybe in the future I might do that with plaster, but instead I took, um, some paints, sienna paint, brown paint, uh, various browns, and took a brush and just kind of dabbed it, jabbed it along, and I thought it came out pretty good, uh, that's maybe a little light for some people, you know, maybe I could have used a little bit darker sienna, but I like it. I like it. It really looks muddy. And I wanted to put some type of base on it, some type of simple mosaic. Uh, here, hold on. There we go. So I just took a